tonight on BBC One. At seven o'clock, tomorrow's world includes a look at the dangers of driving. Murray, accommodate a vehicle. <laughs> the old trick, eh? Eat the telly before I get a chance to nick you. It's a toaster. Dalek, you have been defeated. Surrender. You have failed. Insufficient data. Nats, you ain't got no humanity. They're the foot soldiers of a Jew-hating, mass-murdering maniac, and they need to be destroyed. That's why any and every some bitch we find wearing a Nazi uniform, they're gonna die. <laughs> Is this world protected? If you're not the first lot to have come here, oh, there have been so many. And what you've got to ask is, what happened to them? Hello. I'm the doctor. Yes, indeed, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Good evening. Oh, that's a bit skewed with. I mean, there you go. Get that back on properly. There we go. And that was it. Is that blood? Was it? No, that's uh, coffee. Okay, yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good morning. Man, I, like, and never has there been a better fusion of embracing the past, the heritage of what is Doctor Who, and moving forward into the future with that past with you, right? Uh, then that Matt Smith, you saw all the different doctors that he uh, walked through, <laughs> walked through the hologram as Matt Smith. I, I, first time in costume, I guess really I, fantastic. You know, um, few times I think you, you write something, I, I think Steve was there, and it just really 100% hits the nuance, every nuance of what Doctor Who is, right? I'm kind of feeling the same way about uh, ho horror of uh, Fang Rock right now. I'm, I'm watching a my uh, season 15 Blu-ray box set. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous! It is, darling, gorgeous in every way. Although uh, um, I can never remember if I talk about this stuff or not because I guess like my stream is like stuff in my head going on, blah, 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 and it goes on the screen right? blah, 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 like that, right? That's that's how. It but the stuff in my head, you go. Pfft, that's, that's what I do in real life to everybody, right? I'm just like, Bleh. and so it's all the same stuff, and it changes, and it and it mutates into different things every now and again, right? Quite a lot, quite a churning, blah, 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 blah. right? Uh, so, uh, um, not sure. I think I mentioned this. I heard this on Tim Paul. I thought it was such a great analogy, right? Of um, the, it, it seems to be a bit of a slow news week of late. Well, not for us here in Israel. Fuck me, that that changed yesterday, uh, and um, it felt like a tsunami. It can't be for the storm. Yeah, be when the water rushes out. <sighs> you are fish. This rushing in on reality. I must have spoken about this this week, right? I must have done anyway. Because uh, what is it? I think you have this. Eclipse. Now, I've, I've been doing some some cabalistic research. A uh, lunar eclipse that's bad for the Jews. A solar eclipse that's bad for the uh, nations of the world. Right. So, uh, sucks to be you. So, I, I, the, that going on. Right. We also got them firing the the the, the missiles into the sun. <laughs> the well, the Egyptian god of evil miss missiles into the sun. So, some crazy like that. Uh, um, we got the end of Ramadan. We got the beginning of the Jewish month of Peso, uh, uh part there, yeah, this one, which has the Jewish holiday of Passover. Oh, god, we saw that got we got that Gonsamaisa going on as well, right? But, um, I'm hoping, right? My hope is this that this the, this eclipse that we yeah, we're, I think we're in a yeah, I keep saying the end of days, right? And uh, one way the uh, the holy books describe the end of days is there's sort of the, the death. Of Satan himself, right? The satanic force that lays claim to the whole world, right? Satan, and, it, and as he dies, he gets more powerful and gets more, con not more power, more control, right? He gets more and more control. But there, I'm hoping that this eclipse will be his final death rattle, <sighs> and then 
when the sun comes out, the sun will come. The light uh, will see a messianic light, right? And uh, everything will, uh, will be different. That's only next week. So, man, I hope so. Oh, I hope so. I really genuinely hope so. It'll be, uh, if not, oh, boy. Uh, I, I don't know what, what I feel like about this new era of Doctor Who, new season. I, I'm Every indication is they're going to be, like, screaming stuff at me. I, that I'm like, it's going to at least I get one episode that's going to pull me out of it, right? I, I, and even Church and Ruby Road, they, what pulled me out of it? Not the goblins, no problem. Not the Goblin King, not Shooty, uh, uh, not the singing, none of that. No, no, no. It was the um, uh, it was the bloke. Uh, 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 I, uh, there was a trans trans woman or tra I know how's it supposed to work. It was the woman with the penis dressed as a woman, right? I, is that yeah? That's clear. It, that's using speaking YouTubes. The woman with the penis. Dressed as a woman. Okay, fine. I'm like, oh, me, the one who was in the band with uh, uh, with Ruben. You know, they want you to go, oh, what a bigot. You hate them for just existing. No, I just hate it being constantly this thing that, like most of the human race, I find very off putting. Very like, and it's not the, the more exposure you give to me of it, the worse it gets, Russell. Okay, right? I'm much more live and let live with the trans world when I don't have to have the trans world rubbing its bollocks in my face 24 fucking 7, right? Uh, you'll find most of us normals are like that, right? Uh, um, so, yeah, just back off with it, mate. Uh, so, will that be in every episode? I don't know. Now, that being said, last episode when I was going over... Uh, last episode, last stream. What, was it last stream? One before? When I was going over Miller's interview and I played the, the scene of um, uh, dancing and singing together... I found it delightful. I like them together. So I don't know. Here's the thing. Everything off screen they do is designed to destroy any uh, uh, love or hope you have for this new era, right? Anyway, so uh, uh, I said, yeah, if, 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 if the, uh, uh, we get a, a messianic revelation, right, off this, uh, um, Eclipse, right? Which well, I, I I would love that to be. It'll make sense that things get darker and darker now, right? And oh boy, things are pretty dark. Things are not looking good. The uh, uh, firstly, I mean, you, uh, Disney uh, has retained its board of Bob Iger forever. I like, and the, immediately the stock price plummeted. <laughs> it was like it was insane. Like immediately. That the uh, Nelson, they were fighting off two other groups. There was Nelson Peltz and uh, there was another group. But I think by next year, we're, they'll be fighting off 30. Good luck with that. I uh, Listen, and I, do you reckon the, the vote was uh, kosher? I mean, look, if there's no problem subverting a presidential election, uh, and we know there's no problem that that can happen because they, they allow you to say that on YouTube now, right? There's no problem for that, that uh, for that to happen. Then uh, you know maybe, maybe they could have been dodgy. Anyway, but it's bad news, right? It's bad news. Well, you have no idea how bad the news that the uh, the aid workers that were killed were, right? That's super duper bad news. Specifically, because the um, was it Shira the the Shira Hospital operation was a per like like. Not just a perfect operation. The the they're going to teach that in um, military academies around the world for years and years to come. Like people think, oh look at all the bomb down. No, uh, not one civilian casualty. Right, and my son, the, I, which I didn't think was going to happen before be, before I uh, uh, be before I came on uh, 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 before I, uh, the stream started. Yeah, the uh, I I was just upstairs getting coffee. And I heard somebody in the back. At first, the dog was going crazy. I'm like, well, there's nobody at the front door. What's going on? Right? And then I saw the dog left a massive poo in the living room. And she never does that. Right? So I was like, what's going on? I heard somebody by the side door. As my son coming home from the from the war, right? I, I, I didn't expect it because they canceled over his leave because of, um, you know, uh, things he, heating up with Iran. Right? Because for some reason, we decided to kill the uh uh this one iranian guy i guess because we know it's gonna i'll tell you exactly why 
right? I'll tell you why at the end of the story. The the, the attitude behind, it. yeah, yeah, I will tell you exactly why. So wait, wait. Uh, uh, so he came home, right? And again, that's what they're talking about, this massive shit. She was so excited. <laughs> and it was a surprise, right? But anyway, the, the they did. he was in this perfect operation, right? The uh, Shira Hospital operation where they they basically, it, the, the, um, I can't tell you how they did it, but they they they, they were built, they, the, the Hamas didn't know that Israel knew they were using it as a base again. Right, they and they, it was like this mis mis uh, direction operation where they suddenly surprise them with like a, a, a gazillion tanks and surrounded the building. Right, and then they got all the um, uh, what's the name about all the uh, uh, civilians out. Uh, uh, and listen, I want to be clear. So you know, people, there's like in every other war, civilians are being killed. Right, mostly by accident. Right, right. I mean, like, not just the well, way I'm not saying they're being killed on purpose. I mean, but they're being killed through like people pressing the wrong button, like blah, accident, like that sort of thing. Not like, oh, I shot the wrong person, right? That's really how it happened. Like, if every casualty in the um, in the, uh, the Shira Hospital operation, as I believe it, uh, was uh, is it every Israeli casualty was uh, a, fr a friendly fire. It happens. It happens a lot. I mean, my 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 son told me that he he, he saw a civilian get 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 shot with friendly fire, right? Just now, like five minutes ago, right? Uh, so it ha that's what wars are like. But the um, so but they did this like textbook cooperation. It's like like literally perfect cooperation. Oh, my, my wife is calling me. One second. Hello. Hi. Oh, uh, were you in an accident? Okay, fine. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, if you want, if you want, you know what? One second, let me just fill people in. My wife has not been in an accident. No, don't, nobody worry. Uh, uh, and uh, she's she's there's one delaying traffic. So you know what? You know this is what you do. Go go on your phone. Go to YouTube. Look up the rabbi from another planet, and I'll be right there, baby. Oh okay, yeah, I have her then. Yeah, no problem. Oh right, my darling. Okay then. Okay. Bye. Okie dokie. You know, it's always bad when somebody phones you up and says, don't worry, there's no need. You have to worry. I'm like, okay, okay. apparently there's been a big accident somewhere. Right? And that's something else I'm going to tie it to later. Anyway, anyway, where was that? My son came out. Um, perfect operation. Right. That was it. Shiva Hospital, perfect operation. Right? Then... Fuck up beyond all fuck ups. They they target this uh, uh, foreign uh, aid convoy for destruction. And, and boy, did they do that! Fuck <laughs> me! What a shit storm! What a fucking shit storm! That, that, it sucks ass a lot because um, we're not treated fairly when we don't screw up. When we when they find anything. They, uh, they, uh, they're like, yes, this proves it. See, the basic premise is we Jews are evil. We, uh, Israel is evil. And we evilly uh, stole this land 75 years ago. Evilly. We did it. And then we raped and we murdered. To, uh, then, then we kept the Palestinians prisoner in their own land and oppressed them horribly for 75 years. Why? No reason. Because we're cunts. We just did that. We did because we love doing that. See, what's really going on when people say that is it's called projection. It's what if see also on the people who says who says somebody will do that, that means you're one of the people who would do that, right? So then um 75 years of uh, occupation, fuck me. 
75 years of Jew hate is what it's been. Anyway, but that's, this is what they believe. This is what they believe. And so when you see a fuck up like this, you get uh, 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 kicked in the balls relentlessly in the media, right? Like, like I, honestly, uh, yes, Israel, 100%, this was a massive fuck up, right? Massive fuck up. Um, like, genuinely a massive fuck up. Uh, 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 and very bad for us, right? Because we are getting ready to go into Rafa. That's going to happen, right? Uh, uh, any second now, we think, unless, you know, this apocalypse goes down first. Uh, um, but, like, yeah, so so, but it, it brings out, like, the the unbridled Jew hatred, right? Which I don't get, right? right? And then when I say unbridled Jew hatred, it's the assumption that because you're Israel, you're an evil uh uh fascist dictator uh who's who like uh, uh has abused the the poor palestinians because just because you hate them because their skin color which is the same as most israelis is, is the wrong color to you right they think it's racist right man uh uh julia hartley whatever name brewer had a bonkers guy on today right right anyway i'm going to show you something much more on the same side because it's easy to take the pit piss out of um, something totally bonkers, right? It's it, it's it's much easier, right? Where is it, Dyke? Um... This incident, three British. Now I don't know why, but the woman in yellow just fucking hates Israel. It, it just assumes we absolutely detest them, and it looks like she's got a cunty sister with her who hates Israel slightly more, right? And he's like, "Fuck me, this is my fault. What, like, what did I do to deserve this shit?" Okay, uh, um, if I could have been in that A convoy, I would have jumped in rather than be here. Um, this incident: three British aid workers killed in Gaza. It has added to the worldwide outcry over the way in which Israel has conducted this war. How do you respond so, so how to you respond? that? Well, firstly, he's got to eat shit, right? That's the only way he's allowed to respond. The truth of the response is we've conducted... Again, look at the woman in pink. That, that sneer. Fuck you, Captain Cunt. Who the fuck? Oh, again, look at him. He looks like Winnie the Pooh who's just been kicked in the balls a couple of times. This is the... That face, that face is how we all feel right now. I, I mean, like, fuck me, this is not good. Why? Because we got to deal with uh, Tweedle Cunt and Tweedle Cunt here. And, and, and not, and not uh, rip them apart. Okay, so here's how the war's been conducted so far. Uh, uh, more humane than you cunt British have ever done it, or you Americans, right? Like, how many did you mow down in Desert Storm? I can't remember. I think it was eight civilians per enemy uh, combatant, right? Israel, according to the Hamas numbers, one to one, baby. Maybe one to two. But look at her seething. How do you respond? I go eat shit now. Fuck me. Here it comes. Well, first of all, this is a devastating tragedy for the families and communities of those people of the World Central K Kitchen uh, uh, organization. By the way, this is why he has this job and I don't, right? Other than he also looks better in the uniform. It is a tragic mistake, a misidentification on our behalf. Uh, we are in the midst of an investigation. Well, I have to say, Firstly, none of you other cunt nations in the world held yourself up to the stance you, you hold us up to, right? None of you. Fuck you. Like, absolutely none of you. Uh, uh, and uh, um, if you did, you wouldn't conduct yourself as well as we have done where we say, yes, it was us. We're not lying about it. And then, and then they're going to go, oh, you're going to lie. Why were we lying? We just told you the fucking truth, you dumb cunt. That I expect to be concluded in the next couple of days um, so that we know exactly what went wrong. What was the mistake? Uh, you, 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 say, you say confidently that this was a mistake. Which part of it was a mistake? Because this is three... What, the killing of the fucking... Why do you think we would want to do that? You say confidently this was a mistake. No, yeah, we absolutely want to eat shit like this. Oh, fuck me. Do you have any shit? I mean, for, forget that we're surrounded by everybody who wants to kill us because we are Jews. Uh, yeah, now forget that bullshit, right, right? Forget that, like, yeah, we just had our, uh, uh, you know, a last part of our country invaded and raped, and, uh, raped to death. 
Look at Cuntface pink, pink chick over there, right? Fuck me. Oh, like, why are you sneering? God, yeah. Uh, uh, um, again, it's like, why on earth are you coming from the point of view that we would possibly want this to happen? You see? You see? We confidently it was a mistake. Well, yes, we didn't want to kill them. We know that now in the cold light of day. Three separate attacks, three separate missiles hitting. You know the answer to that, right? The, the mistake was that they were targeted. They were misidentified as Hamas. Maybe because Hamas relentlessly used these aid workers as cover. Now, don't get me wrong. We totally fucked up, right? What what probably happened was it was, a, it was an 18-year-old says, I bet that's, uh, I don't know. Uh, Ahmed fuckface, right? We've been what we want an Ahmed fuckface for ages. Yeah, let's go. That's how it went. I, I wasn't there. I'm not part of the investig investigation. Pound to penny. I bet. I bet that's how it went. Stupid kids being stupid, right? And also, look, the military is under a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure to so forget some info on the uh, 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 hostages, which might 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 just come in. Three separate cars that were clearly labelled. What are you claiming at the moment? Clearly labelled? It's the middle of the fucking night in a war zone, you dumb cunt. It's not like we're dressing like you. ...moment so confidently that was mistaken. It was a misidentification, and this is a, um, what our Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi, said very clearly yesterday. By the way, after this, he goes into a room with baby seals with a club and just smashes that fucking face and then get rid of the rage. Look at this guy. Oh, he's doing so good. In the early hours of yesterday morning, that the misidentification was um, pre, uh, uh, was before the strike was conducted. Um, we need to understand what was the nature of that misidentification, um, what happened in the dark, in the early hours of, of darkness in the complex uh, scenarios of warfare. Um, and indeed, we have two. Uh, key components of our investigations that are ongoing. First of all, an operational component, an operational investigation. I mean, again, I, I think this guy's doing pretty good over here. Let's just get to cunt face answers, right? <laughs> oh, look. God, look at pink, pinky cunt face. Command investigation, which means... Uh, uh, he hit the bad internet button, obviously. ...means that uh, a former... ...that will have all of the tools and access to all of the information. Um, and they're not dependent on anything. And they're obviously, because they are former retired officers, they don't, they're not dependent on promotion. <laughs> I mean, look at the scowling. Holy shit. These are two. You remember, imagine, those that coming are out, like, imagine coming and out and seeing your wife and, and her best friend like this looking at you. Fuck me, you're in trouble. And where have you been? <laughs> oh, okay, uh, uh, Cunt Face Pinky gets a, a question now. Let's hear you, Cunt Face Pinky. Let's hear how smart you are. It gets to the people in need, and those that are doing the humanitarian activities are protected. Yeah, and, and they don't they don't get killed doing doing that work. You know, that's the basic assumption that they communicate with you to say this is where we are, this is where we're going to be operating. We need to be protected. I just want to put to you what the founder of World Central Kitchen has said. His allegation is that. Israeli forces targeted aid workers systematically car by car. That's what um, again, we just answered that. What happened, isn't it? So again, I don't want to come to conclusions before and based on uh, this guy is awesome. What uh, chef you could just kick him in the balls relentlessly and he'll be they should make a doll of him. You could do anything, and he'll still be like, well, I don't know what you should think about it. Uh, Jose Andres is saying, um, but indeed, the investigation will come to the conclusion. We'll be sharing that as soon as it's possible, uh, because it's important to be both transparent and, um, and and get to the bottom of this, and that's what we intend on doing. Um, so I don't want to confirm those um, facts, those issues. Of course, uh, there is a result of three strikes against the three vehicles, uh, which is clear, so I don't need to be um uh involved in invest okay fine just let's, let's see him read him some more you kill bridges people we need to be very cautious in those numbers that are circulating we know for a fact that some of those unra aid workers were involved in the october 7th 
That's it. That's it. But... Far more of a furore over the fact that the IDF. Oh yeah. Understand what was the source of the misidentification and what was identified. What... Who have already been killed by the IDF, aid work. And what created this devastating result? And Peter, there have been over 200 aid workers who have already been killed by the IDF in Gaza. Why do you think it is now that three British aid workers have been killed, that there's far more of a furore over the fact that the IDF have made this so-called mistake? So-called mistake? Hey, you made a so How is it not a mistake? How are you not a cunt? Right, right. Uh, this so-called mistake. And um, why? Why is it that the Palestinian aid workers? Because they're not aid workers, you dumb fucking broad. For fuck's sake! I mean, how many of these people took part in October seventh, kidnapping, raping, and murdering? Minimally seven, probably much more. How many of them supported it? A hundred fucking percent. So, uh, um. Do you reckon the ones that supported it may be a little bit, uh, uh, be, be, be a little bit naughty sometimes? Who knows? In killing aid workers, why don't you think there was such an outcry when 200 Palestinian aid workers have been killed by the IDF? Palestinian aid workers. Again, cunty and cunty. Oh, fuck me. I think we need to be very cautious in those numbers that are circulating. We know for a fact that some of those UNRWA aid workers were involved in the October 7th massacre. Um, I, before I say anything, you've got to hear, you, you have to listen to the internal side, the internal side that goes, <laughs> So let's, uh, you know, we... Uh, so yeah, this is the shit we're eating now in Israel. Both who are familiar. As few as possible. Uh, it is Peter, a tragedy. Peter, we've had... Single day. Um, so of course... There um, uh, in this incident with the WCK, uh, we have to uh, be very, very clear that there are hundreds of coordinations, act actions and movements that are taking place every single day. Um, so, of course, there, we have to make sure that no mistakes happen. Um, but it is a, a nature of the complexities and the fog of war that does happen on the ground. Uh, we need to strive to... Yeah, shit happens when you party naked, darling. That's basically what he's trying to tell you. Limit and keep those mistakes as, as few as possible. Uh, it is Peter, a tragedy. Peter, we've had two guests on the show this morning, who, both who are familiar with IDF policy, who've suggested that it's accepted within the IDF that there could be around 15 to 20 uh, innocent civilians' lives taken. Again, this is incredible. You take what the British do and they, you double it to make it worse, and you project it back, right? No, the IDF, according to the Hamas numbers, right, have uh, the, the 31,000 dead. We're claiming, uh, uh, we're confirming 12,000 uh, Hamas fighters. I doubt they're 31,000, right? But let's take them on face value, right? 12, 24, 36. Uh, uh, we're getting a 1 in 2.8 ratio. Tragic! 2.8 uh, uh, civilians die per uh, uh, um, per enemy combatant. Britain, 1 to 8. So fuck your 1 to 20, you, you clueless, hateful cunt. Per Hamas member. Is that true? Is there a number given to IDF soldiers to say that it is acceptable for 15 to 20 innocent people to die per Hamas soldier? That's ludicrous. That's nothing to, that has nothing to do with our rules of engagement. Our rules of engagement are actually very clear. The enemy is the enemy. Civilians need to be spared. We have to do everything possible in order to limit civilian casualties. Um, of course, the, the, the reality is that our enemy have and are trying to take advantage of the values that you and I hold dearly. They are intentionally... Well, when I say you and I, I, not you, darling. ...embedding themselves within, within hospitals. They're intentionally... So you say, but you're just a sneaky Jew. ...utilising their tunnel system beneath uh, residential areas. They are used, used, used and they have used schools and UN facilities to try... The tunnels are just for irrigation. I know. ...and shield their activities. 
intentionally putting people at harm, in harm's way, where we are going out of our way to try and limit the going, civilian... Peter, community. if you're going out of your, why, out of your way, why are 32,000 people dead? Why are there reports from hospitals? Why didn't you give a shit when you killed 200... Oh, when they killed 200,000 in Syria? Why is 32,000 a lot, but 200,000 is such a small, insignificant number that you didn't even know it? I'll tell you exactly why, right? Because the you don't give a shit about Palestinian lives. The only time you care about Palestinian lives is when you when you can say a Jew killed it, right? That's it. That's why. But you know, can you ask that question? Tweed will come. Tweed will come to you. Hospitals in Gaza that children are receiving gunshot wounds from sniper rifles. Maybe they're lying. Why is there such a high death count if you're going out of your way to protect civilian lives? So that number that you're quoting is the number that the Hamas Ministry of Health. What are is your numbers? That that no, that number is what the Ministry of what Hamas. What are your Ministry numbers, Peter? Distributing, and I would be quite frank. You know, Peter, I'm asking know. you a very simple question. What are your? Peter, I'm just interrupting you because if you answer me correctly, I'm going to look stupid. Very simple question, Peter. Numbers. What are the? What is Israel's number of innocent civilian deaths in Gaza? And I'm trying to answer. I'm being very frank. We don't know civilian casualties. I'm t and I would challenge that Hamas also don't know. Um, they are basing their um, information on social media reports, not on facts on the ground. And I would I would actually charge that what we, they are not counting the terrorists that are being killed, or they are um, uh, the the numbers and names that they've distributed have been really upside down. And, and that's why we need to be very very cautious. Of course, this is a war in a densely populated area in a very challenging reality. But how can you be cautious if you don't even know the numbers of innocent civilians who, who have been killed? I'm trying to, I'm really trying to wrestle. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll explain it to you because you're such a dumb cunt, okay? It's really simple. Hamas, those people who rape children and burnt them to death, right? Those people, right, who you love so much. Oh, Hamas, we love you. At least you're not Jews. Uh, uh, Hamas, uh, uh, they also fib. I know. Do you remember when uh, 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 they said the Israelis have bombed a children's hospital? 500 Palestinian babies are dead. And it turned out that it was, in fact, an Islamic Jihad missile that misfired and hit a parking lot, killing no one, right? And then you all forgot about it, right? They lie. So when they put on social media, Allah, I have been killed by the Israelis. Right, when they do that. That's called lying. And when they lie, then you believe them. You know why you believe them? Because you are, uh, frankly, uh, awfully dressed. Uh, uh, just absolutely. I mean, honestly, you're not. You're not. You're not like knocking professional at the park right there. You look. You look like a uh, um, some kind of sideshow or a uh, sideshow uh, attraction or game show host or say no somebody will hold up a suitcase on a game show more more of that sort of thing uh, um and it's certainly not unusual so i can't understand how is it that her dad said you kill all these people and you're not awful cunts because they're fucking lying you fucking stupid cunt ah! with this idea that you're being very precise and careful and yet you cannot give me a number you happily will give a number of hamas um, members who have died, but not innocent civilians. Why wouldn't you give us a number that we don't know, that you don't know? You'll tell us a number you do know, but you won't tell us a number you don't know. Is it because you're really a sneaky Jew? That could be. It doesn't quite quite work. Because we don't. Because you're a dummy, darling. Because you you got your job clearly because you know how to suck dick. Because you suck ass at the job. So I'm assuming you could at least suck a dick, right? You suck ass at being a anchor, but you must at least be good at sucking. If you can't suck a dick, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Uh, 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 your little pinky gun next to you, at least she's, at least she's got, got a nice rack, is all I can say. It's very clear because we don't target civilians. We target Hamas terrorists. Our enemy is the, the terrorists. So I can say that with, with a... Good level of confidence that but anything between 11 and 13,000 terrorists have been killed at the at least at the strikes of the IDF. That is what we know because those are the people, those are the enemy, those are the um, uh, those that are. See, what we do is this when we aim our guns, right? 
we look down the sights and we count the people the bullet's going to hit. And we go, bam, right? And we see they fall over and then we write one, right? And then we do that again. Bam. See, because we know we're killing them because we see them, right? We write it down too. But the people we don't kill aren't dead because Hamas lies, right? Damn, that's wrong. There's a lot of death going on in Gaza, right? There's a lot of death taking advantage of the civilian arena those that have weaponized the civilian arena those are the people we are targeting so when we have confirmed like when they show the shifa hospital here which my son was literally just at you they're supposed to make you go oh those evil jews i'm going fuck me we, we did a good job <laughs> those are the people we are targeting so when we have confirmed kills by our airstrikes or our forces on the ground so those are the numbers that i can confirm I don't know because we are not targeting civilians. Civilians are uh, caught up in this war are a tragedy. It's a war that Israel never wanted, a war Israel was forced into. So you say. By Hamas that launched a war on Israel on the 7th of October. If you're expecting us not to fight Hamas because they're hiding behind the people of Gaza and raise a white fly flag of surrender, I'm afraid that won't cut it. Please, we I will don't not, think we your will allies are expecting you not to do that. Uh, the no, we're just not expecting you to hurt anybody. It makes us sad. And especially if you don't hurt people and the people who are bad say so you hurt people, that makes us sad too. So if they tell us you hurt people, even if you don't hurt them, you hurt them because you're an evil, bloodthirsty Jew. And I, I'm just going to make a guess. The uh, uh, the pink chick on, on, the, uh, on the left right now, uh, uh, she's uh, in a position explaining how she got her job too. <laughs> Words of our prime minister is that Israel's actions are because. Oh, Rishi Sundik, who gives that? That means that uh, uh, we can all agree. Fuck me, Hamas and, and and the Jews can all come together and say we hate Rishi Sundik. Right? He could actually bring peace. Fuck me, he could get a Nobel Prize. Look at the yellow, the yellow jacket cunt right now. Ooh, I'm going to stare so intently and stop my little feet in. Coming increasingly intolerable really quickly. Um, you run the risk of alienating your allies, the US, at the UK. We could be in a situation where technology that the UK... Oh, fuck off. Speaking of increasingly intolerable, I can't. I can't, I can't. So, to me, this looked pretty bad, right? To me, this looked pretty bad. Now, added on to that, Right. My daughter was nearly killed last night. Uh, do I have the... Uh, uh, no, two nights ago. Where's the, where's the uh, news article? Uh, do, do, do. God. You could... Uh, not there. My wife sent it to me. Oh, here it is. Fine. There's a... I've grabbed, I've grabbed the video that, that, uh, that goes with it. Then we'll get to the chat. Then we'll get, get to the chat. Where's the video? Here it is. Is it on YouTube? So I can download it. Do I? Oh, they won't let me download it. I don't. No, I don't want to do that either. How do I do this? Uh, I'll just uh, I'll just have to share the screen. If I do it like this, I'll make it bigger. That might work. That might work. Let's have a look. Right. Oh, now I can't see where I am. Bloody hell! Yeah, share screen. Uh, screen. Oh. Ah, it's over here. Chrome tab. Fine. Fine. So here you uh, is this. It? So this is like uh, uh, the guard, the you know, the checkpoint near my local town. And yes, the Jews and the uh, 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 Arabs all have to go through the same checkpoint. I wish I could download this so we could see it, see it more clearly, right? But uh, uh, so my, my daughter works there checking, right? And there's uh, this guy rammed the, the, the police. Where is it? I'm not sure if you can hear the sound. The sound's terrifying as they get out and he's like running at you with a knife. All right, so yeah, that's the knife, if you can see it. And I think, I think my daughter is like just uh, 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 on the other side, right? <laughs> she, like she's, uh, uh, I think she was either on this one or the one, uh, the, the 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 next one over, right? But she's really close to being killed right now, right? 
That might be her <laughs> that they're, they're aiming at. I'm not sure. Well, I didn't think they were that close. But, you know, thank God they shot him. And they're, and, and because they shot him, where are they going to say, how dare you Israelis kill another innocent Palestinian? Hmm, how dare you? Right? That, well, they were, he was with a knife. Doesn't matter. He was innocent because we say so. Yes. Yes. Anyway, anyway, so my son came home. I was asking him. He's saying they, they, they're like, they, they, he, he's got a few days off. He said, but that could change it any second, right? There was stuff going on with the arm. That could change literally any second. So, uh, uh, but he's, he's, he's got a few days off. So, 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 like, you know, they're freaking out about these aid workers killed. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I said, well, that, do you think that, 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 will, that will hold, hold back Rafa going into it? He's like, <laughs> whatever. You know, it, 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 that's such Israeli attitude. Right, like they are going in. <laughs> it's like it's going, it's going down. I don't think anybody can stop it. Right, I really don't think any anyone can stop it. I mean, a mask, but they're not going to. Hello, Leela. Oh, you see, last time I had Leela on the uh, uh, on the thumbnails wasn't so great, but oh boy, is it come together this time? Right, it looks fantastic. And this picture of Tom. Do you notice the uh, uh, the Glenn Finnish next to him? Yeah, I, this just works perfectly, right? Right. This all just comes out perfectly. I think that this might be the first thing we'll do. We'll do a uh, unboxing of the uh, season fifteen box set, which is in gorgeous, right? In gorgeous. It, 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 it like they all are, right? They are absolutely. And uh, I believe Dan has uh, uh, Ian Levine on again tonight, starting exactly when I finish. That I really want to watch it, right? So I believe he, he's on. Uh, and um, we have to thank Ian Levine for so many of these extras. They, uh, they, they are just awesome. Anyway, I just started getting into the box set. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll look at the turn. Uh, Doctor, why are you super gay in the year, in the space year 2021? Who gives a toss? Uh, put the next season 15 disc in, would you? Uh, uh, that's just perfect. I think that I think this might be on the... Uh, I'm trying to think what to do with these thumbnails for the... Um, uh, the people who subscribe to Substack, the the the, the paid tier, right? I think I, I don't know what I, I really don't know. I keep trying to think of different ways to use these because I keep keeping all the good ones, right? Uh, but I really like this one, right? I think the gag in here is perfect. Uh, uh, and also I'm quite, I'm very happy with this with this Leela, right? I think she I think listen, uh, uh, Leela is more buxom than she was she was in real life, but it, you got to understand. Everybody goes through rabbi vision, right? Everybody goes through uh, rabbi vision. Oh, I just thought who, who we can do for thumbnails. I haven't gotten to cartoons yet. Maybe oh, we'll have to do to, to a Flintstones one soon. Yeah, Flintstone and Who Framed R Roger Rabbit. Yeah, I think we're going to do... Oh, man. Yeah, there's a lot There's a lot of good cartoon fare we can do for that. See, the Saturday night ones, I, 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 I can't do anything topical. Because I have no idea what's going on because I've been offline. I have to make them like two days before it goes out. So, like, I have literally no idea. <laughs> They've got to be somewhat generic, right? But uh, this Saturday night, this is what we're working on. Go for a bit of Forbidden Planet action with uh, uh, Sydney Sweeney. Oh, man, does that work beautifully, right? Uh, um, what a great thumbnail, right? What a great thumbnail. It's been a good, great thumbnail. Tomorrow with the Millie Gibson interview uh, uh, and the uh, absolute, and the, um, classic comic collection i love this thumbnail like for me i think it works beautifully right i'm really happy with it uh, uh uh i don't know about you but i'm spending my free time reading the new doctor who magazine backup strips comic collection you tell them darling i just it just works so well together right right i might have to make absent that big bigger though i'm probably going to make him bigger yeah i can do that no problem i'll play around with that tomorrow i'm very happy with this one <laughs> Uh, um, and uh, uh, Millie looked look, look fantastic as always. Funny, the, yeah, I've really triggered people with, with my thumbnails of late. This one really upset people. Doctor Who has always been woke, said an idiot who uh, 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 has no idea. <laughs> so I was like, no, no, woke is uh, evil, uh, totalitarian, and uh, imbecilic uh, uh, worldview, right? It's uh, 
it's the opposite of anything the both the Doctor Who and the character of the Doctor would ever espouse, right? Uh, sadly, I hope Disney was going down. Maybe could this be the ultimate darkness that we're coming to that Disney may survive? God help us. Oh, this was the last week. I, I, I love to hear this one with the uh, uh, Ecky Thump t shirt. Merely, darling, we're going to miss you here at the Rabbi's channel, right? Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, let me see. I'm, I'm very happy with how uh, Leela Camp came out this time around. So, we've got lots of, again, I find these very convincing Leelas uh, um, who are a bit booby, right? Again, they're going through Rabbi Vision. Uh, it's the funny thing is, on the, uh, the Blu ray box set, one of the extras is. Louise Jameson talking about how ridiculous her uh, action figure was. Says, I went for a four for action figure and I look ridiculous, right? It looks like nothing like me. Uh, uh, it's really funny. So they've got these huge breasts that I don't have. In my mind, you do, Leela. In my mind, you do. See, all these, I think, very, very convincing, Leela. Uh, uh, and sci fi, Sydney Sweeney, yes. Uh, uh, all this works so well, right? All this works so well. I think, but next week we might go for uh, Jessica Rabbit. Like, who, who, who could be cast as Jessica Rabbit? Um, I don't know. We'll have to think about it, right? We'll have to. And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, because I love you so much, because I love my audience so dearly. Uh, uh, I will be thinking about it long and hard. <laughs> Do you like it long? Do you like it strong? Ramahada, you can't go wrong. Let's get to the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, Raymond Williams is here. Uh, how do you think? Had Leela had breasts like that? I think it would add another two million to the ratings. Uh, uh, a, mil a million per breast, right? Uh, uh, and that's a, that's the amount of ratings they're going to lose <laughs> when Billy Gibson goes bye bye. Um, uh, well, well. So Darren M is here. How are you doing, Darren? M? Big prick is here. How are you doing, big prick? Uh, Fly Highlander, how are you doing, sir? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, but most uh, most importantly, good evening to my fellow Chads. Hello, Chads. Uh, e, Doctor says to saw the ranges. Yeah, he has. Since everybody is talking about uh, J.K. Rowling, when do you think Russell D. Davis will join Doctor Who? Uh, it will be so stunning and brave. Oh, thump. Uh, um When do you think he'll, he'll oh, let her join Doctor Who? Uh, uh, that's not going to happen anymore, I think. No, Russell D. Davis, sadly... Sadly, it has his brain in his ass. Uh, 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 and often poked, I think. That's what my, my guess. Often poked. Uh, Zebra Holdens, the Tatas is here. Zebra Holdens, the Tatas. Thank you for joining us. Uh, um, she says, a terrible place. I would not go. Where's the terrible place? Uh, what was I talking about at the beginning? I don't know. What's the terrible place? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, uh, just want me to say the Rabbi's video on the uh, Doctor Who trailer made uh, the saltier than uh, trailer made the uh, saltier than uh, Kyrat read it. What's that? Who's saltier than Kyrat? Okay, now I got to look this up because I wondered why I got I, I've been get, getting a lot of uh, strange attention, shall we say? But I got to uh, oh, a second, there's another tab, doink. So who are looking up? It's called the salty uh, than cry at Reddit. <laughs> Who's this guy? Okay, saltier than cry at. Share the screen. See if, see, if, see if it can find me. You know, now, now we've had a subject that I truly love. Me. <laughs> I truly love and care for. Me. Um, how can I find me? Trailer. Okay, I just got a fine nerd Roddy. Well, I'm glad. Is this pro or anti? I can't really tell. Uh, always find their way to gain thousands of views. Oh, so it's anti. Oh, so this is, you really helped me out by being here. Oh, so how, oh my God. I've just, that was one day's worth I scrolled. Fuck me. Nazi grifter John Del Elros forgets what position he holds while covering Ed Pisca's situation. Oh, they're in, de they're in free fall over that. Listen. And anywhere I can find myself, do you think? Uh, can I do search? Here. Find 
So if we go rabbi, no, no rabbi is as yet. Uh, hey, what if I do? Let me do. So Reddit rabbi. Let's see if that comes up with anything. No. Uh, can, I, can I search in here? No. Well, it's got to be okay. Again, he posts like relentlessly. This guy. What is this? Uh, chip inside the brain. God, they're obsessed with no drawing. <laughs> okay. I mean, like, again, this is just like an advertising uh, uh, sheet for, um, like, to get views. No wonder I've been getting more more toxic fans and views. Oh, thank you. This guy's really helped me out. <laughs> Critical trick. There you go. Uh, 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 many people have confidence he can pull off the role. Okay, well, I'm glad you do. Uh, look at me. I'm the coolest and most hip doctor ever. You know, being self-obsessed uh, and uh, constantly mugging the camera isn't that cool or doctorish. Another new uh, trailer drops, and with it, confidence that Judy Gatwa, uh, Judy and Gatwa being able to pull off the role. Yeah, they don't like my thing. Oh, man. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Jedi Sith Master. Right? Do I get to... Oh, I got quote, quotes there. Oh, fuck me. Yes. Uh, um, you don't think yourself and constantly bug in the carriers and doctors. The guy who made this uh, has watched the 10th Doctor, right? Oh, this guy, uh, um, commented, yeah, 10th Doctor wasn't mugging into camera, and they realized he often uh, considered one of the best doctors. And yeah, again, why Why do you think he was self obsessed, right? Hell, a few incarnations of the doctor have huge ego. Okay, it's not a question of egos. Man, I, yeah, I love the way that when people are dumb, right? They they just uh, um, they get they, they they they're so dumb they don't understand how they're being dumb, right? And they and it makes them think they're smart because they don't get how dumb they are. Oh fuck me, this is awesome. Judy Gatwa has two appearances so far, has literally been fantastic. No, the first one was shit. The second one I quite like. Uh, and you see, it gives me so much more legitimacy that I'm being truthful when I say the first one was shit and the second one I quite like because. It, it, it shows I'm not being like, oh, he's the wrong person. No, I quite like the second one, right? I, everything else around it, not not so much. Uh, Big Red is supremely Doctor God, Again, these kids who know nothing about Doctor Who. Uh, you know, we aren't allowed to have confident, a uh, confident black person. No, no, confidence in, not a... Fucking... Again, this put all they think about... Literally, all they think about is uh, is race. These people are so freaking racist, right? Um, oh, this explains why they, uh, I got so much shit here. Uh, uh, honestly, I kind of lost interest around the 11th Doctor. Well, okay, you sound like a normal person. They should watch the 6th Doctor sometime. I, again, I love the way yeah, the, the, they're such morons. They are such morons. Oh, God bless. That, that I, I, I I'm quite chuffed about that. <laughs> that I, in a strange way, that makes me very happy. <laughs> Where's the uh, um, doing? Uh, yeah, you know, you know what always makes them crazy, right? Taking the piss out of them accurately. That, that's why they like. That's when they start to spin out. That's hilarious. But man, I really like. Okay. Uh, Otis Starters, hey, just want to begin to say the rabbi's video. Oh, yeah, you're the one told me. Thank you, Otis Starters. Uh, uh, what's happening? What isn't happening, baby? Paul Tosland. What isn't happening? Matthew, uh, Matthew J says, this is Darren M. Uh, well, there you go. Fine. Zooming through the chat now. Zooming through the chat. I'm, I'm clocking on. Uh, w Cox says, oh, Lonnie. I don't know what that means. Wacock. Hello, Daisy. Daisy just came down and say hello. How you doing, my darling? Ethan Buckholder is there. Catherine, mate, can I say some? Uh, can I say uh, some? Uh, someone's notes. Uh, will Sweet Vector's notice uh, me, my coming out? I noticed, right? Uh, everyone pretend I was always there. Everybody, it, uh, you don't feel bad. <laughs> you don't feel bad. Uh, so no government in Palestine. It's more than that. Uh, uh, Hamas is literally. Like, there's no central command. That's what's making it so hard right now, 
right? They, 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 they can't get intelligence because everybody's dead, right? They, they, they're gutted from the inside out. They, they, like Hamas are, you know, you have these idiot talking and said, well, you, you won't be able to militarily deal with Hamas. Uh, uh, we seem to be doing that, baby. Oh, but think of the civilian casualties. Yes, they're far lower than yours. You evil Jew. Yeah, <laughs> that's really what it is. Um, uh, wait for the fan that moves every scene with the humans in it. What are we talking about? Uh, 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 Godzilla was, uh, Godzilla XCOM was so bad. I, I, that's a movie I won't go and see in the cinema. That's just silly. I, I liked, uh, I saw uh, Skull Islands in one. I thought that was glorious, right? I really enjoyed that, right? But uh, I'm not going to see uh, Godzilla XCOM. That is a movie for streaming. Right, that is a hundred percent a movie for streaming. That's not a movie to go go to see. See, that's the thing. Cinema has progressed to a way that is got to be a movie worthy of seeing. Right, it's got to be a movie worthy of uh, um, putting your time into. Right, putting your money into. Right, otherwise I watch it at home. Right, it's got to have got to be worthy of going out. Every movie should be an incredible uh, uh, cinematic experience. Right. Uh, and then watching it back home, you, you get to see it, see it again. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically where I am with that. I think, um, you know, like, like these sort of movies, uh, uh, just you know, who cares? Even though it's doing okay. Why? Because it's not woke. It's bad, but not woke, right? It, 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 but they refuse. Like, like you know, I remember when Obama says, or was it Obama or Clinton says about right-wing people, they cling to their religion, they cling to their guns. You fucking idiot leftists! You cling to your wokeness, that uh, e even when it drains you into it, uh, uh, um, uh, into being impoverished. Uh, Jessica, even uh, even this uh, this is the way uh, you, you can imagine it. Be a bit well, okay. Uh, so, okay but uh, 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 it's better I don't. Right? It's better I don't for all concerned. Uh, 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 it could get sweaty and nasty anytime, baby. Fine. Speaking of sweat, sweaty and nasty any time, let's talk about Tom Baker. <laughs> so my uh, uh, season 15 box set did arrive. Oh, and again, the covers are fan freaking tastic. Now I make my own. I, I, I got to actually get them printed. I got to get the last four, five of them printed out now. So I make my own ones with the uh, classic uh, uh, logo, not this piece of shit. So, uh, uh, but when you do, do remove the uh, slipcase, doink. The, uh -huh. you, it's, it's gone. However, sadly, still on the side, right? That's why I have to redesign. It also gives, gives, uh, gives me a lot, lot more room. Other than that, beautiful, beautiful box there. Another complaint, and I don't have many, right? When you put the disc in, you still get that Jodie Whittaker logo intro with the title flying through space. Now, there's two reasons that annoys me. One, it connects me to Jodie Whittaker. And two, that it... Uh, um, that trailer made me think it was going to be kind of good. I thought that was exciting. I thought it was feminine. I thought it was new. It was the last thing they did that made me excited, right? Who were, uh, uh, but anyway, yeah. So this arrived a beautiful form factor. So sorry about the low guys, <laughs> but what can you do? I did, but really, really beautiful. What's that? That's from I, that'd be underworld, right? There's so many elements in the visual elements that just make this a delight, right? An absolute delight. So you open it up and you get this. Oh, again, I, I like this. For me, who was a graphic designer, I think this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. Uh, uh, although, again, I hate to tell you, it's so much easier now with AI, right? It's so much easier. So then you open it up again and you get another. Let me close up so you can see it. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm on episode three of Horror Fang Rock. Leela, uh, uh, Louis Jameson in a in a horror of fang rock outfit, even sexier. I mean, really, just like so freaking hot. I mean, so frighteningly hot. So, uh, and in, when you finish opening up, you get uh, this booklet of. Ooh, I will look through it. I guess it's stuff you can buy. Ooh, and the booklet that comes with this again. Look at this artwork. Just, I love the care and attention that goes with this, and it's. That's why I think I like the Russell D. Davis uh, uh, 2005 revival, because it felt like everything had care and attention go into it. I don't feel like that today with shooting. Here we go. So that opens up. That's the okay, a beautiful rendition of season 15. Nice uh, bit of um, yeah, Invisible Enemy there. 
Right, let's have a look at the disc. And then we'll go through the box set and see, see, see what's in it. Uh, oh, no, I have started. But the, behind the sofa is a bit weird. It's a strange combination in behind the sofa, people. Uh, one person, I'm still I'm not, not entirely sure who it is. Anyway, so we have the discs. Uh, Horror Fang Rock. Ah, oh, let's do this as we go through and we'll, we'll, we'll go for the, the special features, right? We'll, we'll go for the booklet, I should say. So, uh, Doink, just <laughs> do, we, do, we, do we know who, 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 who does this graphic design? Does it say in here? Because, boy, did they do a good job. I know. Uh, again, beautiful. Again, you, you get this like little beautifully illustrated mi mini book, right? And you hope. <laughs> so yeah, I guess it's coming. This came out. This is the last thing before Star Wars, right? What, what did it say? Oh no, this came out. This is the first thing that came out after Star Wars. So far. So uh, some great pictures. Uh, uh, I think again, this story. The, the, Rusty Davis says, "Well, if the BBC was going pretty over, it would just have to be talk ghost stories." What you mean, like Horror Fang Rock, which is perfect, right? I mean, it's literally a, a perfect story of Doctor Who. Amazing how good it is. All the characters drawn out incredibly beautifully, incredibly uh, uh, accurately, sketched out. I like, but it is, it's Terence Sticks really at his best, right? Uh, uh, it's got wonderful backstory in it. it like, we, it, it, the, it basically, okay, if you don't know the story, it's uh, the do Doctor and Lee uh, uh, turn up at this uh, lonely lighthouse. With a three-man crew in like the nineteen, early nineteen hundreds, I think, uh, and um, essentially there's a crashed spaceship next to it, uh, uh, which turns out to have a ruson in it that menaces the uh, this lighthouse. Goes. There's also a uh, ship of uh, uh, posh people, which has their own incredible backstory that crashes on. So, so like it's really a base under siege as they're being menaced by this big green slimy ball of fear. Fine. So you have updated special effects, a and yes. This is one of the things that need the updated special effects. The updated special effects really genuinely, genuinely help this. I mean, like, you know, here, let me uh, uh, pull that up here one second. It is, I'm going to go to my history. Um, so, Fang Rock. Doink. Yeah, okay, effects comparison. So let me download it. Doink. Doink. Uh, thinking about it. Here, download. Here it comes. Oh, plug that was quick. That was quick. Share screen. Video file. <laughs> So, so the, the and these really um, well here. This is the the spaceship crashing, and it's it's. It, I like how they try and keep the original look while updating the effect. So yeah, so you can oops, you can really like see, see see the difference. Now the thing is. A lot of people go, oh, Zachary, so for me, the 77 effect pulls me out of it, right? Whereas the the uh, the current effect makes me, it, it makes me feel like I'm, uh, uh, it doesn't pull, uh, pull me out of the story. Uh, and the, the, these ones are actually reasonably pointless, right? I think the original uh, root on view, right, was uh, as good. Uh, oh, no, this TARDIS uh, uh, materialization, way better. Like you have this very bad looking uh, uh, tiny model compared to this new CGI one, uh, much better, right? Um, where is it? There's, but I want to show you the uh, this of uh, uh, the ship crashing. Oh my god, it, it it's night and bloody day. I mean, it's night and night, is it? So far, the only real problem I, I, I have with this story, and again, I haven't watched it for a few years, is the, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, look, the, the 77 one is really kind of ropey. I mean, they did their best, but this, the, the 2024 one, yeah, again, you're not pulled out and pulled out in the narrative. 
Yeah, you see what I mean? But, uh, 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 yeah, no, I, so I think this is the, the worth of the price of the book seller. Mate, Louise Jameson looks awesome. Right? Look, Just looks freaking awesome in her uh, uh, Farrah Fang Rock outfit. Well, I just saw a prototype that they're releasing a Destiny of the Daleks box set with two uh, two Mavellans and a Dalek with the little bombs around it. That looks pretty darn cool. Hey, can we can we see, actually see the root on? Yeah, one second. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I, this one's okay. I didn't really need updating, but it did, this feels more seamless. Do we see it climb up? Again, the, the, the original effect, fine. But again, I, I, look, for me, I just prefer these ones. Yeah, but Tom Baker in the story, perfect, right? Freaking perfect. Yeah, you know what? While we're talking about this box, let me pull up the, the artwork, right? When I'm talking, we go over here, doink. Oh, this thing came out. Very good, noble savage. Uh, fine, share screen. Okay, so what we have on this one, and I, 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 can, I can I reiterate how fucked off I am that Doctor Who magazine has dumped itself down so much they won't put a breakdown of what's on these box sets. They used to have a beautiful breakdown. Now it's just... So you get the new effects, right? you got 5-1 sound. You have a commentary one. That's um, Louise Jameson, John Abbott, and writer Terence Dix. And a uh, new commentary is uh, Tom Baker on part two and four. That's interesting. Infotech, that's always on. Making a documentary. Yeah, this, uh, this is new for the, the, the Blu-ray. Right, I thought I thought it was also on the DVD. I was wrong. And you can always tell when they do when it's a, a, a new one because they they start off with like drone drone footage, right? They, wherever they are, they, and then they they shoot it around this lighthouse, and it looks nothing like the lighthouse in Horror Fang Rock. It's like a little one on it. Like why are you there? It makes no sense. Behind the sofa, so behind the sofa has a a uh, strange groupies, right? Um, you got Betts and Roberts, who's the wife of Penance Roberts. Uh, Toby Adoki and uh, Louise Jameson. I think that's one group. Then you've got Colin Baker, uh, Sarah Sutton, and Janet Fielding. That's another group. Then you've got Katie Manning and Matthew Waterhouse. That's actually a very co a great combination, right? They bounce off each other really well, right? Katie Manning. You wouldn't have thought. That's kind of like a, a cop show I'd like to see. Katie Manning and Matthew Waterhouse. Uh, Paddy Russell interview, the uh, director with uh, talk about the popular talks, uh, Trails of Continuity, Denny Fisher toy advert. Wait a minute. Let me see that. that no, I don't. Uh, no, I, I haven't ripped this yet. But there you have Louise Jameson talking about it. audio archive, which is uh, Tom Baker on the Pebble Mill at one in, uh, on the 5th, uh, no, on the 1st of May or the 5th of January. I can't tell which. All right. So this one, uh, I, I guess. I think uh, first of May is my guess, and then you get the PDF. And again, let me go back. Uh, yeah, again, the tragedy is this type of incredible artwork is much easier to produce now. It's so much easier. But again, the design on this is beautiful. It's a really lovely product, right? It's a genuinely lovely product. All right, and it goes on a little bit more. Fine. So next one here. Let's look at, we're on Invisible Enemy. Oops, sorry, my fingers over it. Again, strong a strong piece of graphic design, in my opinion. Uh, so this is something into it. Don't go. There we go. Let me hear. Let me get my uh, DVD book. Was the Invisible Enemy? Did they, did they update the effects on the DVD release as well? Hang on, hang on. I will look. I will investigate, ladies and gentlemen. I will investigate. We, we look at this under I. Uh, the Invasion, no. Closer. 
Invasion of Dinosaurs, no? Man, when they release that, they got to do new new effects on that on that story, right? Invasion of Time, no. Invisible Enemy, fine. Does this, fine. Does this have new effects? Uh, do special features. Visual effects. Oh, I don't know. Visual effect. This is Matt Irving meets with former vision. No, no, no. CGI effects. Okay, first. So this was done on the uh, on the DVD. But it's fair. I can't. All right. I remember because like the space stuff wasn't really that strong as I recall. As I, I'm not. I can't really remember. I, um, yeah, but wasn't really that strong as, as you know as as, as I, yeah as I recall. Um, yeah. Do, can I pull that up? Invisible enemy new effects. Oh, okay. Here we go. Let me pull this up. Uh, doink, doink. I honestly, for me, this is one. Of the, this is one of the features that I really like. So uh, uh, I, I believe it. And again, I get it. A lot of people think it's sacrilege. East Jerome, baby. East Jerome. That's what I say. One second. So, uh, video file. Oh, it's still downloading. I thought it downloaded already. Thinking about it. See, this one takes longer to download. I don't know why. Okay, fine. Video file. Still thinking about it. Try one more time. There you go. Visible energy. Contact has been made. Contact has been made. About it. Oh, we're back. We're back. There you go. So, yeah, again, it, it, they try and do the same thing, but it's much more subtle. And... The music's a bit rough. Uh, yeah, so listen, I mean, I think the 77 version has a lot more char. I do. But uh, in terms of enjoying a story, enjoying a, a narrative, I find the 2008 version much easier. Right? Uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm kind of on board for these new effects. It's all, again, for me, It's as long as I keep the original version, uh, uh, of course. Right? I don't think you should ever, you know, get, get rid of it. I think these, these are all... All quite beautiful. But again, I like the 2008 version. Looks very much like the 77 version, just done a bit more, uh, you know, um, not yeah, not as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Jarring, right? Yeah, so again, and the, the, the new, new rare effects. Yeah, so for me, I like the new effects, okay? I like the new effects. A lot of people say no. So, uh, what can you do? Uh, so, you order conference with Louise Jameson, John Leeson, uh, Bob Baker, oh, is it? And Matt Irving. Oh, I'd like to hear that one commentary. I, I can hear it. I have the DVD. I have the Blu ray as well. <laughs> I can hear it in stereo. Um, I can hear it in 7 1, Rob. Making a documentary, uh, Cosmo remake, uh, called The Making of It. Don't remember that. So that's not new. Uh, behind the sofa, I, I like behind the sofa. Behind the sofa is always my first thing I watch on, a, on uh, when I when I'm looking at a story because um, it kind of like reminds me of the story. Like I get the cliff notes, so I'm like, <clears throat> when so when I watch the story rather than experiencing the narrative, which I do, I'm able to like really watch it. So like horror fan rock, Tom Baker's performance is freaking incredible. It's really absolutely like perfect. Right, absolutely perfect. Um, oh, one second, one second. I've just got an important com communicate. Um, this is from like ages ago. Um, one second, this is from ages ago, but yes, the man from Del Monte, he say yes. Was my internet going down again? Uh, I don't know. It look, looks like it looks like it's still going. Looks like it's still working. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. So that's Invisible Enemy. 
What else have they got in there? Studio footage behind the sofa, visual effects feature it. Um, oh, yeah, so that's the team discussed making uh, invisible, en- invisible Enemy. Anytime you have Matt Irving talk about effects, it's great, right? It, it, it really is fantastic. I love uh, uh, his knowledge and his enthusiasm. I love Matt Irving, right? And I, I've liked him more the more like great he's got, right? He's grown old with me. Um, 50th Anniversary Archive has an interview with John Lisa and K9. Uh, appears on Blue Peter, Days of Doctor Who debut. Man, K9, I think, really helped Doctor Who in the same way the Daleks really helped Doctor Who when, when Star Wars was taking over everything. K9 opinion is like, whoa. Photo gallery coming soon. PDF archive, right? Uh, uh, all good stuff. All good stuff, baby. And again, the booklet, uh, just sublime. Absolutely sublime. One second. Uh See, I like the stuff that makes getting a, a physical media worthwhile, right? Again, this little book. I, I, I wish this little booklet had a spine, right? That's, that's the only way I'll make it like a coffee table book with it as well. That'll be that'll be a fantastic little revelation. Now, Emma Fendel, the only one I've, I, I, I've, I ripped to my, uh, my my computer thus far. Anyway, before we go, Viper, before we, uh, before we go on, uh, uh, I am not the only person who has purchased this box. Set. No, I am not, ladies and gentlemen. And again... Great thing about this box set, uh, uh, I think many of the great features on it come courtesy of, of the great uh, uh, Ian Levine. Uh, Ian Levine, of course, is appearing on the interwebs later tonight. Forty-five of your, of your Earth minutes uh, uh, on on the uh, uh, you know on, on the on, on a wretched hive of scum and villainy. That's how, that's basically how it's uh, um, described. I would say, uh, who better to oversee a hive of scum and villainy? Then uh, uh, you know a man, a man of backbone and of uh, 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 you know who is sure, sure of himself, a, a man who has clued in. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I'm, I'm a go. Dan Hadley, uh, uh, Birmingham's king of the geese. Can anybody see me? Can anybody see Dan? I don't know. Look. This is weird. Okay. I, I, uh, <laughs> if anyone in the chat can say, tell me if they can see Dan, because I can't. Uh, are we online? Let, let, let me check, right? Let me check. I'll try and reload this page. Doesn't look good. Hello, hello. No. <laughs>
And I'm back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back. Terribly sorry. Terribly sorry. <laughs> anyway. As I was saying, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know what I was cut off. I was talking about the season 15 box set. Uh, physical media, good thing to have. A, sky, a, a high for Scum and Millie with Ian Levine later tonight. It is, of course, uh, 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 hosted like, like the ringmaster, ringmaster of doom. It is, of course, Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks. <sighs> <laughs> At last, we got there in the end. <laughs> we got you, then we thought we got the pair of us, then we got nobody. Well, I, th- I thought we, I thought we were going to have a lovely pair, boy. What can you do? Speaking of which, we... yes, yes, uh, uh, amigo, how are I, we? What's I, going on? I, I, I've got to work out a way mm. of best. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm talking about? Uh, thing of best uh, exploit. My, my thumbnail. Ah. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to say this. Uh, this one's today. Have you seen it today, <laughs> one? Yes, I had I had caught sight of this. I've got it. I've got it both barrels. <laughs> <laughs> but I I like the Tom Baker. I, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he looks like he's uh, yeah he's got it all sort of planned out, doesn't he? His, his entire evening, he's got it all worked out. He's got got a Glen finish down there. He knows what he's doing, right? He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow though, Billy <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> really Gibson having a drink with the uh, Absalom Dark. I think now look at it. I, I got to make Absalom Dark a bit bigger. I think. Yeah, he, he seems, looks. Uh, yeah, he looks intent on uh, on drilling, uh, Millie. There. Well, uh, me too. Quite frankly, uh, oh, uh, listening breasts. There, uh, there. There's some work that's gone into those. Oh well, you know, you know. Uh, uh, it, it has been said the rabbi is the king of the glistening breasts. Uh, 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 and this is going to be Saturday night's one. Uh, bit, bit, oh bit my god. <laughs> Sydney, Sydney Sweeney. I t- I I do <laughs> not. I'm giving. She is absolutely gorgeous. She is indeed. She, you know, absolutely gorgeous is, uh, uh, you know, what nobody's ever said about Ian Levine ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I dare say oh, he's his him. mother, and maybe, maybe if you if you get hold of his autobiography, he has written his autobiography. Apparently, right. it's a, but it's in very limited numbers. He said that it's quite scandalous, and if it was ever published and disseminated widely, it would probably earn him a uh, a stint in the courts. So. <laughs> okay, you want to publish it posthumously, then, right? But uh, <laughs> uh, come on, Ian, you live for Doctor Who. I mean, like. last, last week, you and I spoke about this, and I said that everything about Ian Levine is interesting. And recently, for example, during in recent days, during the recording of the second show with, with Ian, I found out that Ian Levine is related to Gal Gadot, who plays Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't I mean, sound very likely, but it's true. No, no, no. Listen, the 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 the, uh, the Jewish world is very small. <laughs> it really simple. is. I'm not even joking. It's very small. Like, 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 Jew, Jew, when you see a Jewish celebrity in Israel, no one's that impressed. <laughs> everything about this guy, everything that he says, is. Did he really just say what I think he said? <laughs> but, no, but, <laughs> So there's, there's, like, there's mm. many layers of, of Ian Levine. Firstly, again, you've got the fascinating thing. Uh, no, first you've got his like incredible history of Doctor Who, uh, uh, with his lifetime with Doctor Who, which, again, and his contra- that's fascinating. His contribution to Doctor Who, which is has many different facets, also fascinating. And then mm. on top of that, you've got the man who is just like, uh, okay. The man I, himself, I, yeah. I wish I had an Ian Levine AI. <laughs> now and again, now and again, I come across people in my life who are really into Northern Soul, and they've all heard of Ian Levine as well. Uh, they don't know about his connections to Doctor Who, and it's That's the same funny. with DC Comics. Famously, Ian Levine was the only man in the entire world to have a collection of every single book ever published by DC Comics. Wow! And um, yes, yeah, so people in the comics world knew of him as well so this guy he he is known for many many different things and now <laughs> he's on type 40 <laughs> oh, he, listen he strikes as the type of person who gets known wherever he goes he's just a big personality a big very interesting personality he makes uh, a big uh, impact he's, he's a very forceful personality as I, I i suspect a lot of people know but he's also able to to marshal people together he's a big believer in community and uh, and this is why, because he's also a man that a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of people who've dealt with him will tell you things about him, and and you think, oh, I wonder if that's true, or I wonder if that's fair, and uh, I'd say most of it probably is true to some degree or another. But I think what people don't talk about enough is that that sense of community that he does have. 
Uh, yeah, you know, he's been, uh, uh, I think, the entire internet age getting a very bad rep. Rep. rap, rap. Well, a, yes. I think the, literally the last 20 years, he's been, uh, maybe more, he's been, uh, he had a bad reputation coming into the 2000s, as I recall. Um, and I don't think, if, now looking back, I don't think fairly. Um, but uh, uh, I, 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 this is why I like him on your show. It feels like he's he's being re- rehabilitated, re- rehabilitated somewhat. His image is being rehabilitated. The uh, without without uh, any spoilers for the conversation later on because it's his story, so I, I, I won't I won't tell it. But he talks a little about that. For you've hit the nail on the head there, really, because there was one event in the mid noughties which I did. I, I do think, because Ian mentions it several times, particularly in this show, it, it, and that changed a lot of things for him. And, um, yeah, so I think I think you're right. I think that he's been pilloried yes. unfairly. Yes. Uh, and uh, I think the truth of that is, I think it's taken a while for him to process. Obviously, it's no secret to the fact that Ian was ill quite very seriously a few years ago. He, right. he talked with... He talked very frankly about that on the last show that we did with him. He did. Again, all these things that, like, he, you know what's interesting? His openness. He's very, very open. Mm. And because he's very confident in, in who he is. I think that, I think that's what it is. Yeah, he, he's very sure of his own identity. Yeah. Uh, all these different sides to his nature and the things that he enjoys as well. And uh, so a lot of the projects that he's putting together, they would boggle most people's minds, e- even thinking of one. But he has so many different things on the go. They're all going, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're all. And they're, they're, I just wish I liked those projects more. I looked at the three minutes of the massacre, which is like one of my favourite stories. I, the, the massacre, yes. I love it, and, and I, I, I'm not opposed to the animation, but it's just not not doing it for me. I wish it was right. I, it, to me, it looks like a. Um, a demo to to get the job rather than the finished job, right? Um, I just wish I liked his stuff, but you know, look, I'm I'm faulting him because he's spending like he's not spending more of his money making it better for me, right? So yeah. that's so <laughs> well, I really can't do that. We get on this edition of the show, we do get an update on all his projects, uh, right. a sort of a potted update. Uh, which just goes to show, really, just since the last time we spoke to him, the, the momentum, all these plates that he's got spinning. So we get that. But we also get this is something I don't believe that he's ever really done before, certainly not in an expansive way like this, to sit down and talk about not just Doctor Who then or Doctor Who from then as it is now. This is about Doctor Who now, what's going on with the show, where it precisely is now, what it's been in the recent past, and his hopes for his feelings about key personnel that are involved and key decisions that wow. you and I, Rabbi, you and I, and and numerous other people who make content on YouTube and podcasts, you know, this is our stock trade. We speculate right. about this stuff all the time. And Ian does now and again, if you follow him on Twitter, he might say the odd thing, but he largely keeps under wraps. Here, he he brings a lot of it out. And oh, it's, um, I can't wait. So, so wait, wait. Is this uh, this is this is pre-recorded? Do you have your live show after it, or is this the same? No, no. The the live show is off for a couple of weeks, uh, which is right. our Easter break uh, while people are off on holiday and doing things like that. So we've got a couple of treats like this, uh, something next week as well. And uh, yeah, so big, big stuff. We, when we whenever we do go away for two weeks, we like to make sure that there's still something very, very meaty. To uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ian Levine's the same way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have to ask him. Um, but we do for, we do go into Jinx one soon on the show. Um, yes, so uh, uh, yeah. anyone she meets. <laughs> uh, there's there's some stuff coming up next week as well. Uh, but yeah, in this one, it's uh, myself and a few of the regulars sitting down again with Ian Levine and uh, catching up on what's going on now and what his instincts are now, his personal tastes, his hopes, and the things most importantly. But the real reason why people are turning up is the stuff that boils his piss, the stuff that gets him swearing. That's what everybody wants, and he's very aware, he's very self-aware. He knows that's what people like, and he does bring it. He does He does bring it very much. Okay, in this. I'm, I'm, You're going to love it. <laughs> so this is on at, uh, was it, uh, 8 o'clock? Eight. UK? 8 p.m. UK time. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm in a nightmare right now that the clocks around in the different systems mm. I use in YouTube 
and Twitter and uh, what was it? And StreamYard, they're all not aligned properly. So, like, okay. so, so I thought you're on at seven your time, which is a half hour. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> like, and like for me to for, so to start, on, I have to set my stream. My stream starts at seven o'clock Israel time. I have to set yes. it at seven o'clock on StreamYard. Then I went and I go into uh, YouTube. I then have to change it to six o'clock so it makes it count down to say it's just a guns and mice. It's a pain in the ass, baby. It's a pain in the ass. That sounds like. excruciating. It is. And it, well, <laughs> it's not like a fist up your ass. I mean that that's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, are you, do, you, do you have to uh, run? Oh, you should. Do you have time? Or, or you have I can run? hang around. I've got, I've got a good. I'm spend twenty minutes going through something right, with you. Right, right, right. So I've been going through. Uh, uh, the, the I've been doing essentially an unboxing of, of the new uh, box set. Uh, let's let me show the screen. Do you think people are... I was wondering about this the other day because I've had a load of stuff come in the post. I thought, should I make unboxing videos? I thought, you know, I think, well, yes. surely everybody I love unboxing videos. You do. I do. I never watch them, but when I I've made two in the past, I'm, I did enjoy making them. But I thought, well, I'm having a good time. It doesn't really matter if, if anybody else is. No, like, like, no, you're having a good time, and you all, it's the sort of thing people can put on without having to like pay that uh, pay pay that much attention. Hey, Leela, get back back in your box. By the way, my AI Leela's yeah. getting a lot better. We have. Uh, Wow! Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. But like, like it really feels like like Louise Jameson. Yeah. With Boom. Her, uh, with yeah, Louis, Louis, uh, uh, Louis Jameson put through Rabbi Vision, right? I right. know this is sacrilege because I did, I did, I was attracted to Lily when I was a child. I wasn't sure why, but as an adult, uh, I think Louise is a very beautiful woman. She seems lovely, but when I watch the old stories back, don't fancy her. Just, oh just, man, jugs, I love jokes. I, I, I watch it horror fang rock and when she's in the uh the sweater and pants combo, I am so turned on. Like that's, that is strangely enough, that's the sexiest thing I think she ever wears. And and you yeah. can only really see it from the neck up, which yeah, is yeah. really weird. No, no, no. There's great scenes of her yeah, this is not being perfect, but there's great scenes of her as like hunting the rootin, right? Uh, uh and then hunting, she, hunting and rooting. <laughs> no, but she's got like like it, she's the, thing, the great thing about horror fang rock, it's interesting that uh, uh, Russell Davis recently said if the, just the BBC producer would have to, like, you know, uh, talk ghost stories. I'm like, yes! Oh my God, so much better than the shit you, you got whacking us in the face right now. <laughs> right? Th th that's what it is. It's a great ghost story with, like, lots and lots of really well, uh, well drawn, drawn characters. Anyway, anyway, we're up to. Can you uh, imagine if Russell T. Davis was working on the show in the seventies, trying to you know, talking to somebody like Matt Irvin and saying, you know, like what, what I want to do is have a, a great, <laughs> I want to have a great big penis sort of waving in midair. Can you do that, Matt, with tin foil and a few bits of polystyrene? Uh, we, <laughs> as, as, as I understand, they 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 they, they did all that in John Nathan Turner's part as in Brian. Explaining to Matt Irvin what uh, you know, no snowmanning, Matt, snowmanning. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> why do they have to do that? I don't know why I do that. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're up to uh, uh, I'm up to disc three, which is yeah. What my least favorite story in season fifteen, right? Uh, um, it's just well, I don't know why it doesn't work. There's it the, was the, it was my least favorite as well, and and that's the reason why I got together with Simon and Stephen Noonan to review it on the podcast last year because it's it's one of those episodes that just washed over me. But oh, watching it with that, those two guys and reviewing it, I came to a new appreciation of it. Okay, can I can I suggest you? Uh, uh, I'm I'm going to do this now, right? But you make up a little playlist of of any of those uh, any of the those ones that are on this box set uh, of your reviews of it. Right, I will watch that before I watch Image of Fender, and then I would appreciate it a lot more. Right, so you should you you should plug that. I'll I'll send you the um. See, I know it's on the. Hold on a second, I'll, I'll grab the link while I'm talking to you. Yeah, because uh, we've all got these stories that sort of we we don't feel them or they sort of pass us by a little over the decades. And I right. realised that that was one of them. It's never it's never really interested me in reviewing the same old stories over. I mean, does anybody really need another review of the caves of Andr the caves of Andrus? No, but I, 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 I got this little thread going on on, on my channel. I had uh, yeah. Sean from Review It Yourself had never seen Remembrance of the Daleks. Oh, so yeah, we, yeah. That was a really great stream. And then we did the same thing with um, Face of Evil, which is another one. So I'm going to try and get him. There's another guy who's been talking to me about coming on 
Uh, what's this guy's name? He's, I've seen this stuff appear in my timeline now. Uh, new channel. <coughs> Here, one second. Let me look him up. Let me look him up. Uh, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> is this him? I can know that. I think so. What's the name of the channel? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, <coughs> uh, the Sensphere, right? Sensphere. So I'll get in contact. Oh we'll... yes, yeah. I, I, he's been in touch with me as well, sort of. Yes. All right. So maybe we'll. Uh, we'll put, nice. We'll... Seems a nice fella. Here, okay, let me put 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 this in in the chat chat. So uh, uh, anybody with the, with the season fifteen box set, what uh, wants wants to uh, uh, check out? Image of Fendal with much more appreciation. Fine. So we're up to. We're over here. I mean, the, the, the very famous picture oh, of wow. Image of Fendal. There you go. Uh, it, by the way, the Fendals were much better where, uh, uh, when they appeared in Caldor City, <coughs> which is a uh, Chris Boucher verse. <coughs> uh, uh, mixture of Doctor Who. And here, I, let me find the covers. They're, 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 they're an audio series starred Paul Darrow. And uh, who was it? Paul Darrow. I'm doing the wrong thing. Hang on. I go here. Yeah. Let me just look in this folder. If I find it in this folder, they, sh they should be here quite quite quickly. Uh, where we have to, uh, should, maybe, should, should I? Oh, Capital City. Look at that. Ha <laughs> ha. It's really smart on me. I, I actually labeled them. <laughs> you, you know when you're just amazed at, at, at your own brilliance? Yeah, cow dog. <laughs> so, have, have you ever seen these? Or heard these? We've spoken about them before, and I've never bothered with them. But They're I'm, brilliant. So oh many people God, have told me that I'm missing out. This, this is better than... Well, firstly, you've got... Great, but you've got Russell Hunter, who I love him in it. He played uh, Commander... Was it... Tuvok? No. In... No, you mean um, yeah, in Robots of Death, Ivanov. Right. You, uh, Ivanov, right? You got F Scott Frederick reprising his role from Blake Seven. Peter Miles as a new character, uh, and Paul Darrow as this assassin who's probably Avon, right? In my mind, he was Avon, right? But this the series goes. There's there's not that many discs, but when you get onto like this like the second season, right? The Fendor show up. <laughs> it's really cool. Right, and they, they it's, they're much better in this than they, than they, than they were in the in the uh, TV show. But yeah, but they, this is a this is a big big recommend. Right, so it's strange to look at some of these projects and realize that everybody involved in them, these extraneous things, are all brain bread now. It's such a I shame. Know, I know, I know. Oh, what's his name's in it as well? Uh, Trevor Cooper, uh, who's oh from in, Star Cops. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so in the, the Image of Fendal disc, you have uh, audio comedy with Tom Baker, Louis Jameson. Uh, Wanda Ventham and Arthur uh, Edward Arthur, I believe. Right, let me just check. I think Cunning Monkey has done uh, new effects on these. I'm not sure. Right, I'm Cunning not... Monkey. Yeah, you, you you know who he is? No idea. <laughs> oh my god! No, he he does. He's a fan who does new effects, and they're excellent. Cunning yeah. Monkey. Yeah, this you, is you where we were talking it? about Fendel. Yeah, Maybe you'll have to you'll have to show me. I'm showing you right now. One second. Uh, doink. Share screen. Bingo. There you go. So uh, uh, he has these things called Matrix Edition, which I don't think really work that well. They're like cut down versions. But like full series where where, where he, where he uh, does new new effects. These are as good as the BBC ones. Oftentimes yeah. better. <laughs> right. You never seen these before. No. No. Oh, they're excellent, right? They're, they're really excellent. So, I mean, oh, Sun Makers is the first one they've got. Sun Makers and, and Underworld. Well, now, see, they got the rest of season 15 on Blu-ray. I think he'll, he'll probably do the other ones that don't have new effects. But yeah, anyway, I digress. Uh, but they're excellent. Clever people. Oh, and they're free, right? Here, I'll, I'll put it in here. They're, you just download them. Uh, uh, <laughs> they really, they, they, for me, they very much enhance my view. Uh, have, have, have you gone to your uh, season 15 yet? Yes, it came a few days ago. Oh, so, have, have that's why I was thinking about making an unboxing video, but I thought, well, it's just the same as the last box. No, 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 no. It's not. They're not watching the box. They're watching your reaction to it, right? That, uh, that's what it is, right? Um, anyway, so we got the uh, commentary on it. 
and making a documentary that's not new uh, behind the sofa weird combinations in behind the sofa okay so you have um louise jameson toby hadoki and pennant robert's wife right uh, okay what? and then you've got it's really weird and, and then you've got uh, behind the sofa is a featurette where they like half hour show where they you see the highlights of it and you watch doctor who stars watching it and comment he's honest <laughs> okay i suppose i understand why they get pennant robert's wife on <laughs> why so be honest it, 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 it was just such a weird choice, right? And then you got um, Colin Baker, but with Sarah Sutton and uh, um, Janet uh, uh, Janet Fielding, right? So that's, oh, but that's good. Combination. Uh, so far, it's not bad, but the best one, right? This is the one you want to you want to hang out with. This is the party you want to go to. Katie Manning and Matthew Waterhouse. Ah. <laughs> That's a great combo. It's so bonkers, <laughs> but it's a great little combo. I, I, I like that a lot. Uh, anyway, so that's the behind the sofa. Deleted and extended scenes. That, 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 that'll that come from Ian Levine. Uh, yes. Horror threat. That's the um, Hammer Horror's uh, influence on Doctor Who. So that's good. Tom Talks. So, so basically some more of a uh, Tom uh, uh, on the Life Universe area. But this one is talking about season 15. Uh, Emu Broadcast Company. Have you seen this extra? This is so bizarre. I've seen some of the Emu stuff, that, but I don't know which one's on that box set. So, uh, yeah, I'll have to wait and see. But there was, there was a long-running... Wasn't there a strand on their show, Dr. Emu or something like that? I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was a long-running strand or one time they did it. No, oh, just one time. Oh, okay. I, I really have no idea. I, mean, I generally hear... Well, I'll, I'll put it I, I was watching Doctor Who when this stuff was going out. Me too, because, uh, because some of my earliest memories are of around this time. Um, so I do remember remember the Emu show and various other things like that. Yeah, one second. I'll we'll show you a bit of it. I mean, Doctor Who oh, isn't oh, my oh. very, very first memory of television. My very first memory of a TV show is Gary Glitter on Top of the Pops. But well, Doctor Who was hey, second. Hey. Many children have Gary Glitter as their first memories. Uh, uh, your, yours is probably better than most, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, like, who doesn't want a bit of... Uh, uh, oh, look at that. Uh, again, worth it. I find this box that has so many things in it just make, make me smile, right? So that's on it. Um, da -da -da. Coming soon, photo gallery and the PDF archive. So let's have a look at what I'll show you the booklet. The booklet also beautifully designed, right? This beautifully de designed booklet. Um, to be honest, they always are. They're, they're really nicely put together. They are. They are. It's a very professional thing. And it's got this great original artwork they always make for it, which I, which I really like. Mm. Right? It's uh, no, no, it's, it's really they they, they really out, outdo themselves. Let me get to the next page. Uh, and again, uh, uh, look, Louise Jameson. Uh, uh, why don't you run her through the the, the railway vision? She's a, she's a much <laughs> right. But uh, more ample. Yeah. It's, I tell you, if I could do those glasses, rabbi vision, you, you will. Be <laughs> The world, well, world would be a fuller place. Yes, it would be. And more bouncy. Uh, uh, some <laughs> make, so I, I remember about 15 years ago, I was watching this, and my son came in and he need, needed my help. Sorry. So I hit pause, and it was Lou James on the screen. And you could just take that, that frame and frame it. She looked gorgeous, like perfect, right? Literally perfect. So, so then after I came back, I would randomly freeze frame. And every frame in it, she looked just like stunning. It was, it was really insane. It was very bizarre. Uh, uh, so the ordering company on the Sun Makers are. Uh, then, if you want the uh, new effects, you go to Cunning Monkey. Hang on a second. That's a, that. This is way where you go to get new effects. Uh, uh, totally worth it, right? I big recommend. And if you want to check him out first, you can go to his his YouTube channel, and you'll see see little bits of the is. Uh, they're very good. Anyway, so then you got I'll the go, info. Totally, yeah. It's really. It's, it, this is a. This is something that you should do a real feature on on your channel. This is something that, that you could have a real conversation with. Because these effects, they're, they're, again, generally speaking, they are excellent. See if we can drag Cunning Monkey out of his tree. <laughs> or her tree. I, 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 like, 
like he wouldn't come on my channel because like, like he's very very progressive right oh. and, and i'm probably evil incarnate but your, your channel is more about open space <laughs> uh so louise jameson conversation i didn't know they had that wow that's a matthew sweet interview with louise, louise jameson that's that awesome those are the, like some of the best interviews i've ever seen they're, they're, yeah matthew sweet the uh, sweet all a huge douchebag like don't don't mention covid to him he'll start like rotating and screaming Right, right. <laughs> yeah, he behaves like a, com a complete arsehole on, on right. Uh, Twitter. Right, right. But talking about Doctor Who, like knowing how to pull, pull out a... These interviews are... Whoop, one second, doink. There you go. Uh, and again, uh, uh, I, I love the Sun Makers. It's, uh, it, yeah. it's, so, it's so clearly uh, uh, Robert Holmes having a rant. Because uh, uh, he his tax bill was too high, <laughs> and I like that Sub is able to do that, right? Like, yeah, you know, if you wanna if you wanna use Doctor as a platform, use it for that. <laughs> right. Here one second. Doink. Next one is Underworld, the much maligned Underworld. Now Underworld also again, I never found it to be so awful. I found the the the, the blue screen, green screen stuff, blue screen I stuff. I struggle. I do struggle to get through that one. It's the only. It's the, the Tom Baker story. I, rem I remember the very, very least. I sort of coast through it every time I try and watch it. But uh, I will have to give it a proper relook. Let me see if I can find, if, if, I find, if Cunning Monkey's got, I think he has it on YouTube. Let me see if I can put, uh, uh, this is called Underworld, right? How do I search? Oh, Underworld. Underworld. I, I mean, I'm intrigued if it's easy to fix the, uh, you know, the terrible, um, uh, CSO, maybe wouldn't that be awesome? Here, one second, download. He's got to be able to do something with that. I don't know. I don't, listen. I would put so much money into these. Uh, like, like I, I really just want to CGI the gun out of uh, uh, what's it called again? Um, what's that one with the the, the Lazars? What's that? Oh, uh, you mean Terminus? Um, yeah, if I could CGI the Garn out and put a really great monster in instead, that would be so much better a story, right? It would be so much better a story. You put, you put the candy man in. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, uh, no, I mean, like, do, do a Garn like villain or, or a monster. And uh, yeah, so there we go. I, I, I do think that would make. Come on, so let's see if we can find the new effects. So I love the way oh. it looks on the TV. See, I think that you, they stay in the same style. Yeah. That's really, really nice stuff. That's the equivalent for Doctor Who that was done on the Star Trek original series. Oh, that's great. All right. I mean, they're, 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 they're normally very good, these things. Let me, let me zoom that's in. really good. Yeah, yeah. And again, and he says, I don't understand why, why they don't do these on, on everything. It, I, he does this in his spare time. And he's, he does a great job on them. You know, I want to see if they, they if they have some of the, the CSO stuff. I mean, that model is authentically 1970s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he uses... Oh, yeah, so this is... Ah, oh, still pretty bad. <laughs> I, think he has, I think he has improved it slightly where he can, though. Right, right, right. All right, but again, this will be the version... I, I When I review it, this will be the, the version I watch. Probably improved it a bit. Okay, fine. So there you go. Wow. So, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to go and you have to go and get that. Looks great. Oh, and, he, and he does one second. Let me doink. Stop. There you go. And he does so many of them, right? I mean, and they they're all really good. So, but and he 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 really runs the gambit, like Delta and the Bannerman. Delta and the Bannerman. You wow, can't okay. you can't fix Delton and Bannerman, but he he gives I'm I am sold. Absolutely okay, wait, sold. Wait, wait. Let me look up Delta and the Bannerman. I can't ima I, I can't imagine there's uh you know you, it's that's like pouring perfume on a pig. I know you love Delta and the Bannerman. <laughs> so I've just copied the link so I can go and look later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here, one second. Let me let me grab that. Cause I mean, I guess the uh I mean, you've got to really CGI CGI out the little girl and probably the mother, 
Replace the mother with Barbara Windsor, somebody like that. That would that, be fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like face swap them into somebody. Uh, that why not? It'll be it'll be it'll be way better. Here, one second's coming. Uh, she cried. <laughs> uh, fine. So, anyway, well, well, so, so Underworld that has in it. Well, this is downloading. Uh, audio comedy with Tom Baker, Louis, Louis Jameson, Bob Baker. He wrote two stories that season. I didn't realize. Right here, it's, it's downloaded. He wrote he wrote Underworld alone, didn't he? Without Dave Martin, whereas Invisible uh, Enemy was the pair of them. There we go. Delta and the Let's see with new effects. See what that. Do they fix the bus? Oh. Thing? Well, this is a bit better, right there. It looks the same to me. Oh, no. no, no, no. The uh, the the, spe- the the guns are different, but also the background I think is is slightly better. Yeah. Okay, but do they have the bit with the TARDIS and the bus? Because if they do, I'm very impressed. Right? That, See, that's this, is, this is my this is my Empire Strikes Back now. This story. Uh, yeah, this is definitely improved. That's it. Yeah, the debris at the front of the screen is different, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh, oh that's, that's cool. Where, where they go to the toll booth. One second. Navarino. There you go. That's better. So they're looking for her. Oh, okay, that's the um, the satellite being launched. I tell you, it's amazing. That I'm excited to see Bonnie Langford and Doctor Who again. But I am, <laughs> even though I, I'm not like very confident. That's the guy from the Flying Pickets. That's right. Okay, yes, that's me. way that's better. Me. Holy crap! That is way oh. better. How really brilliant. sells it. Really sells it. Let's see if it would. Because uh... that's the weakest. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Part, this, this really. Excellent. Oh, this is awesome. And, okay, and it, yeah. It, 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 gets, <laughs> it makes the whole production oh, so much better. So funky. We've been talking on on uh, the Type 40 show about more... Because we do classic series reviews now and again. As right. you know, uh, fewer people watch them on YouTube. <laughs> I know. Uh, when we do them. So when we do those shows, they're very much for, you know, totally for us to indulge out what we want to talk about. And the others have been saying to me, you've got to talk about Delta and the Bannerman. Well, you <laughs> love it so much. It's, 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 so I think if we do, we, we'll probably look at that version. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Wait a minute, do they have one that's cut down? Because he does his cut down version it's called the Matrix Editions. That actually might be my. I've always said Delta and Bandman is a 45 minute story. Or not, it's not an agonizing 45 minute story. Let's have a look. One second, just going through it now. No, they just it's just on season 10, season 9, I should say. Nothing past that. Where, where, where he recuts them into like modern length. Uh. Yeah, it's yeah, not, not really. Anyway, Underworld, Underworld. So what's in Underworld? you got the making of your documentary with Jonathan Newitt, who plays uh, author. I can't remember. Uh, Norman Tippin, Bob Baker, Dean, oh, Dave, oh, no, they both wrote this one, apparently. Andy oh. Reid, uh, designer D- uh, Dick Coles, video effects designer AJ Mitchell. Oh, that, he'll be interesting to hear on it. Then Behind the Sofa, studio footage. Uh, Doctor Exhibition Rushes. Ooh. That sounds good. That sounds really good, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The, tra- the Trails and con- uh, Continuity uh, coming soon. Invasion of Time. Photo gallery. Yeah, I'll show you the new artwork they, they had made for it. One second. Move. Doink. There we go. Whee! Oh, that hey. looks, yeah, that's really good. Again, again, just because uh, I, I know this is kind of a graphic designer. And I just, it's it's such a pleasure to look at. I am so mad that they removed the feature in Doctor Who magazine where they where they go through what uh, uh, what's on these sets. It's so stupid they removed it. I have no they idea. They just why. don't bother doing it anymore. Yeah. And yet these are the one items of Doctor Who merchandise that sell like gangbusters exactly. every time. <laughs> I, I I just it feels like Jason Quinn, the new editor is like on sabbatical from Razzle magazine, right? It just it's it, that's how it feels like to me. Um fine. So Invasion Time has the updated effect that's from the DVD release. 
So, uh, and you have a commentary is with Lu Louise James and John Leeson, Anthony Reed, and Matt Irving. Uh, that's and you got another commentary with Tom Baker on episodes four and six. I I reckon that's probably with Toby Hidoki, right? To he, he normally is there to like you know pull people out to moderate, yeah, right, adjudicate. Right. So making of that's from the DVD release. It's uh, it's got in it uh, Andred. How Leela ends up with Andred? That's just <laughs> that's that's more stupid than Perry with with Ikanos, right? Uh, uh, yeah, to see Leela sort of w w walking off with that soy boy. Yeah, it feels ridiculous. Like I would understand. She needed like a Conan. She 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 was like a Frank uh, Frank Frazetta. Painting, right? That yeah, it's she, like it's like seeing Sydney Sweeney hook up with Owen Jones. It's just not going to happen. Right. Oh God! Oh, oh! I nearly lost my my, my erection. That was terrible. Uh, um, <laughs> so deleted scenes uh, behind the sofa. Rise and fall of Gallifrey, exploring the history of the Time Lords. Is that new? Yeah, one second. Nice now, now I've got to look at my DVD books. If that's new. that's the thing, I forget what's new and what isn't when I read through these right. things. Now, so I was I have this thing which is excellent. Put my camera back on. Do I? Uh, the classic oh, TV yeah. companion. This is it. Really, is excellent. It for like, it's excellent if you're like weirdo <laughs> who need to know about these things. Uh, so we do invasion of time. One second, invasion of dinosaurs. Uh, invasion of time. Was there one or two versions of that they put out? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Fine, invasion Just of time. Uh, so we're looking disc one. Uh, had on it uh okay new cg effects and then okay this too was out of time making of it delete the scene rise and fall of gallifrey so it's not new it's only 10 minutes long as well okay now, now i know only with doctor who can can we get a book that's a guide to the dvd special yes features? but they're so necessary <sighs> the elusive david agnew terrence sticks and Anthony reed shed light on the pseudonym used for uh, story of the uh, uh, Graham Williams era. Scene around six. What's that? A compilation of film footage of Tom Baker on a promotional tour of Ireland. Oh. Hmm. The final battle. Uh, Louise Jameson returns as leader for a special. Oh, yeah, fine. That was the. Uh, the yeah, that's the cool. Uh, a Pete Matig movie. A special movie by Pete Matig. Doctor Who stories. This is from the DVD. Louise Jameson discusses her time on the program. Charles continues his Easter egg. Uh, with visual effects, uh, Colin Mapson. I've no idea what that is. Uh, photo gallery PDF coming soon. Fine, let's have a, we'll look at the, the rest of the stuff in this in the book. Oh, beautiful piece of artwork over here. One second, and then we'll uh, we'll finish looking at the box. Oh, and as I say, the weird thing is, it's like with AI. It's so much easier to make these images now, right? I, um, which is like I can understand people being upset, but look, it's 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 the future. It's where where we are now. Like like these sort of kind of commercial thing images. It it it's it's it, look. If you want to learn, yeah, okay. You know what it's like. We're moving into Star Trek, right? Star Trek Next Generation, where they had like all the they they had like you know the theater group on the ship. That sort of stuff where they can all like do all this stuff. That's what if you want to be an artist, that's what that's what you need to do now, right? There's that's, new uh, new tools, new, yeah, new yeah. skills to but I'm saying, saying saying like people are like, oh we're gonna forget. No, people will, will still do it. Fine. So we got um I'm still going over this stuff. We got what's the name? Uh Castellan. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it's really weird that Invasion of Time is a sequel to Deadly Assassin, and like it, it so like cries out for Robert Holmes to write it, but they couldn't do it. So, the bonus this we have. Uh, let's have a look. We got uh, Graham Williams documentary. I'm looking forward to that. It's new Panopticon archive. Louise Jameson, John Leeson, 50th anniversary archive. Mo Monster Con two. That's from '86 with Louise Jameson. They really didn't have anything much to put on this, apparently. Monster Con. archive. Uh, something from Bristol, and uh, there you go. Just trying to see if any, yeah, <laughs> and then the back of this is yeah, one second. Oh, the promotional postcards, right, right? Right, so here, let's get finish going over what the disc looks like. We have so we looked at uh, um, uh, Horror Fang Rock, this is the disc four. 
Um, Invisible Enemy. Bit, bit of canine Aww. action. I'll call canine action. Uh, uh, even better. D uh, uh, image Offender. <laughs> and uh, I, I, honestly, th this se this season is when I think Tom Baker reached his heights in season 14. Maybe that's a beautiful one. Yeah. But Tom Baker reached his heights in season 14. And he, they all knew he knew what he was doing so well that the, he, he really carried this season. More like also, Lou, Lou, and there, it was, and you had a lot of good acting talent, right? It was a and difficult I, time for the show that was because you'd got, right. you know, Mary Whitehouse had, you know, she got her way really, and and uh, what Hinchcliffe had gone, Williams had come in, uh, things that the, the show was under a certain degree of pressure. Right, right. No, it had to like be more fat family friendly, and I think the introduction of K Nine. Was very, very much, but uh, uh, a, a definite note change, which uh, I think was probably a good idea. One second. I mean, Stephen Noonan always says, you know, R.I.P. Doctor Who, nineteen seventy, uh, nineteen sixty three to nineteen seventy seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, people freaked out about about the assassin, right? And then you get to see uh, what you have inside the box. Uh, just, the thought, the how beautifully this is made, right? I mean, it's 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 crazy, right? It's it, this is there's so much care and attention that goes into this product, which I don't see in many other products. However, I did no, see no. Uh, uh, what's the word again? Uh, character options are, uh, about to do a a uh, Destiny of the Daleks uh, set where you get two two Mavellans. Did you see that flying? Around? I did see that and. I think I'm going to have to. Oh, the, this is the thing. They the announce a set. I see it. I want it. I go. Well, I'll have to try and get that. And then I never it's see it quid. anywhere. And then yeah, somebody's got it on eBay for sixty quid. Ah. Yeah, exactly. I know you have to. You, you have to like get it when when they first come out. Otherwise, go. Yeah, what is more, the the Mavellans or the Dalek with the uh, bombs on it, or both? Both. Uh, exactly. so I already got the Dalek with the bombs on it, but I like ooh, I'm a, those I'm together. They are a formative part of my childhood. I used to draw, uh, I used to draw Mavellans and those Daleks, cut them out, and sellotape them to my bedroom wall as if they were fighting a battle, and move them around. It, again, they were such great design, right? They were such an absolutely great design that was. Is so that a, is that a website exclusive, or are they going into stores that? Uh, probably. Who knows? Again, this is just. I'll go and check I, it out in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look on Twitter. Right? I personally that. think that you know, and Al Duar seems like a nice fella, and I know that he's a massive fan, and he's trying to do his best for the fan base. But the way they're running that line is a frigging joke. Uh, well, I think they're doing their best, right? Oh, here it is. Here uh, it that's is. the worrying thing. You know, I th I think they're doing their best as well, but this is Doctor Who. <laughs> uh, well, not let's, Star let's, Cops figures. Let's, this is Doctor Who. Doctor Who's not what Doctor Who was anymore. Here, here I, I, I just got some pictures of it. Here, I'll pull it up in a second. Yeah, but Doctor Who's not what Doctor Who. Doctor Who is markedly different. Now, again, the, it, it was really good that last stream I did. I had to uh, uh, pull up the clips of uh, Shooty and Millie singing. Right, and, and that was the first time I got enthused about this new era in a long time. Right when I when I actually saw what they 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 were put, putting on uh, when I saw what they put on the screen rather than what they talk about off the screen, which you you talk about a lot, you've got to just ignore everything they're doing off screen. I'm afraid so. Yeah, right. it's very it's very difficult. I mean, that's fabulous, isn't it? That's it, Tony it's and, Toba great, and yeah. Suzanne Danielle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really. I mean, I'm very tempted for this as well. I really love these. Right, ruins of Scaro figure set. I wonder how much it's going to be. Uh, yeah, two hundred and fifty nine pounds. <laughs> well, I was like, I was like say, say with that Blake Seven production, uh, Matt, uh, was it uh, season one book, which I wanted, but was like, by the time it was like hundred pounds by the time I was done. Yeah, it's 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 uh, you know I know I know one of the guys who who puts those together. Well, you know it's partly my it's partly my fault that he's doing that. So I know the guy who's doing it, and I can't afford that at Christmas when I'm buying from, I'm buying from know, my children and stuff. I've got to buy myself this 60, 70 quid Blake Seven book. People are going to look at me gone out. <laughs> oh, well, but it's such a nice book. Right? All that listen, <laughs> yeah. the cost of everything is just going up and up and up and up and up. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, like the, the new uh, Dark Gallery thing came out yesterday. I haven't listened to it yet. And here's the weird thing, though. I'm listening to the new uh, Colin Baker uh, disc uh, with the was it box set, I think, mm. with um, uh, 
uh, and I'm, just, I'm I'm forcing myself through it, right? Which is some is some this of them the are Quinn dilemma. Yeah, the Quinn dilemma, and I, I'm just like really forcing my, myself to get get through it. I keep thinking I'd much rather be listening to the one doctor. Like that's, that's really the, the, the overwhelming feeling, my like, feeling I have, or any of the the, the older big finish stuff, right? But uh, yeah, not. <laughs> I don't think it's working out that great, quite frankly. Fine, I'm going to wrap up in a minute. Uh, do, do you have anything, uh, anything coming no, up? No, that, that's that's me about wrapped up as well, everybody. Don't forget, in less than an hour, we're on the Type 40 channel with oh, Ian Levine. Speaking of which, one one last thing we should, we should really mention. Uh, mm. I'm not sure you're talking about it, but Ian Levine uh, uh, revealed on his Facebook page that the Celestial Toymaker uh, disc has been indefinitely delayed right which Whoa. means what they're saying it might be july august but like for me the only thing they could do to really make that work is get in contact with callum weston who did the great fan one pay him i bet it would be 10 grand for him to do episodes two three and four right i'll bet just two and three right just pay him to do it and give him resources Right, a bit, a bit having more resources would, uh, would help. Add that to the disc if you want to be really, really clever. Then also add the um, uh, the giggle to, to the package. They've completely cocked the whole thing up. Last right. summer, for the 60th anniversary year, they should have had a uh, a restored animated version of the Celestial Toy Maker ready to go with a special feature on there. Uh, sort of behind the scenes with Neil Patrick Harris uh, getting suited up to play the toy maker again. Absolutely, yes. Oh, they, again, this the whole this whole era has been a shit show. I quite like shooting and uh, a million on screen, right? They I, can't quite bring it all together. This synergy of the Hooniverse. They can't. They're talking a reasonably good game, but they they are not delivering with any of it. It's the same problem that they had with Time Lord Victorious, whereby they had this this ridiculously amb- well, that was ridiculously ambitious. The stuff that they're cocking up at the moment isn't really that ambitious. It's only and, a couple and, of lines of merchandise. And also, Time Lord Victorious and it could have worked, right? The so wrong easily. Word, it, like they, I. The malfeasance in running that was unbelievable. That that Nick Briggs cartoon they did was shocking. They, they, it wasn't worth the money they put into it. It was embarrassing, right? What they should have done. The remember Daleks? I think yeah, it's called. Yeah, I do remember. Oh, yeah, and they thought, yeah, Daleks. Everybody loves Daleks. Uh, uh, we'll do a Daleks thing with Nick Briggs, uh, and it was shit, right? Uh, they should have had a live stream of uh, Jake Dubman reading an hour long audio book. Or that set up the first that set up the story, right? And have it done done it live and make it an event, make it something we could all what, interact with, right? Uh, and then and, and build up, and then we would be excited. And the quality of the individual products, the I didn't read the books because I couldn't care, uh, care less. Well, there was there was an example, Rabbi, where what they're trying to do now to to classics like the Celestial Toy Maker, there they had a window to create a, an animated feature geared around the Daleks at a time where there was very little Doctor Who out, which they could have marketed as a standalone TV movie. And they could have shown it at Bank Holiday. They could re- have released it on physical media as a complete thing, as a, as a sort of 80, probably a 70-minute thing. And it would have really filled a nice gap. It might have got kids interested in Daleks again. And they could have marketed it and sold it. Instead, they created something which looked kind of half-finished and ill-conceived, and they put it up on YouTube. They never get it right. They really don't. They really... Although, when I, a, AI uh, video gets better and it gets closer every day, those Dalek strips, those one-page Dalek strips, yes. that would be really easy to animate and create. <laughs> from making, weren't they? If you could do this, that, that, as, as, that's going to be really cool. Anyway, with that, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I'm going to wrap up. Yes, I better get animated as well. Thanks for having me on, Rabbi. I'll catch you later, everybody. And uh, yeah, cheers. Bye bye. Okay, doodle bit. Thank you for joining us. And with that, I am going to hit the end broadcast button. Although I am back uh, uh, on Saturday. What we're going to talk about? Who? Maybe all the things I didn't talk about today, right? Which is like what I say at the end of every freaking stream now. Okay, I got to be more disciplined, right? By the end of the weekend, I will have covered some. Do- Let's look at the stories that I'm going to cover, right? I'm going to cover some stories. Anyway. Cover it, baby. Cover it. What have we got? What have we got? Hang on. Doink. 
Uh, uh, we've really got to copy, uh, uh, go the, this uh, Disney debacle, right? That's the story. We've really, really, really got got to cover. What's going on in Screen Rant? Um, all way of Doctor Who Season 1 times explained. Well, I would look at that. But yeah, but yeah, all this like stuff uh, with, what was it? Doctor Who's new character reveal supports a major Season 14 uh, villain theory. Oh, God. Uh, well, we, we, we will go with this stuff. What's going on in Bounding in the Comics? Um, I have no idea what that is. NWA Championship, don't care. New Daredevil Born Again set photos confirm. So as well as that storyline where Punisher confronts uh, police officers using his logo. Foxy, leave us alone with this. You oh, fuck me, you racist cunts. Right? I can't stand that. Right? Oh. Uh... Oh man! And what do they do when they uh, uh, like, like, yeah? Why would they get rid of that logo? Because they're just idiots. Because they hate their audience, right? They absolutely hate their audience. Oh, fucking idiots! Just annoys me. And then the, the new logo they gave was was shit. It was absolutely shit. Oh, uh, here's the new uh, uh, Silver Surfer. Like Jesus fucking Christ! Don't be wrong. She's she, she's an attractive woman, but like. Why can't you like get the actual thing done right? I I kind of like the Silver Surfer in the other movie, in the uh, uh, Jessica Alba movie, but oh, God. I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, more uh, like more Marvel shit show, more Disney Marvel Marvel shit show. Like start with the actual story, then build on it, rather than just go straight to the, the woke re reinvention. Oh, God, Bill Martin. It makes me wretch. Fine. Yes, Saturday night, we will be talking a whole bunch of crap. That That is what we'll do Saturday night. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say good night, good luck, and may your God walk with you. I'm going to hit the end broadcast button, and I'm going to hit it again.